Hello, this is Mr. Mises here, and I am going to be talking about a hypothesis test for one sample proportion. And you know what? I'm really not going to be going into like doing an example of a hypothesis test. Um, I will do that on another video. So my next video will be actually going through an, an entire example. Right now, I just want to kind of um, get you to understand what a hypothesis test is and how to write the the um, the null and alternative hypothesis. So that's what I'll focus on this. So it'll just be kind of a brief run through on uh, what are we doing and what are we trying to do here. So uh, this is my topic here and I have a video but I'm not going to really show because we don't have the time. But basically um, the residents of Mission, Texas have been voted the fattest city in America. So suppose we take a random sample of a thousand residents and according to the study 38.5 percent of those people in Mission, Texas are overweight. Is there evidence that Mission, Texas obesity issue is significantly larger than the national average, which is 35.7? And that's according to the National Center for Health. So really what we're doing is we are comparing, we're looking for the, this word significant and evidence are keys to understanding that we are going to do a hypothesis test. What we're doing is we're comparing our p-hat, okay, which is right here, 38.5. We're comparing our sample proportion to a population proportion and seeing if there is there evidence that they match up. So, okay, so um, we know, you know, when we don't know the true proportion, then we would uh, estimate it using a confidence interval, but we're not doing a confidence interval here because we're trying to see if um, the sample that I have is extraordinary. Is it just a random occurrence? Or if in fact the true percentage is what it is, um, is this is this sample going to be strange? Because if it's strange, um, then there's something different going on, right? And we kind of saw an example of that in class. So we're doing a one proportion, a one sample hypothesis test. These are the steps for a hypothesis test. First, we need to write our hypothesis, which is a null and alternative. And I'll talk about what each of those is in just a second. But basically, a null is there's no change so it is what it is it's the population proportion and B is going to be our alternative it's basically um, what are we trying to prove right what are we trying to show evidence of number two we're going to identify our conditions and we've done our conditions before this is a sampling distribution so you should know the three conditions that you're going to try to um, identify lastly we're going to do our Thirdly, we're going to do our mechanics, so we're going to find our z-score, and we're going to find that probability that that sample happens, given that that null is true. And then four, we're going to make our conclusion, and we're going to base our conclusion on what we call the p-value. So I'll talk about that in, uh, in, the in the video. Okay, so let's write our null and alternative hypothesis. Our null hypothesis is going to be based on the population proportion. So basically, if you think about it in terms of a, of a crime, um, the null, in our judicial system, people are uh, innocent until proven guilty, right? So our null, our null is that they did not commit the crime. An al alternative is that they did. And what we're trying to do is show enough evidence that they did commit it. If we didn't show enough evidence, then um, we're not going to say that the person is innocent. We just say that they're not guilty. So. What we're going to do is, in our null hypothesis, it's going to be the population proportion. It's what we believe um, could be true. And our alternative is going to be uh, whether or not it is true. So it's going to be either greater than, less than, or not equal to our population proportion. Um, so you'll see some examples in just a second. Now our job, again, is to have enough evidence to reject the null hypothesis, meaning we can accept the alternative. But never, ever do we accept the null hypothesis. We can fail to reject the null, but we never accept it. So let's take a look at just creating our hypothesis. So let's take our example of, of uh, what we had here with the overweight people in Mission, Texas. So what is our population proportion? It's 38 point, it's 35.7. Uh, so that would be our null hypothesis. P equals 0.357. Our alternative is P is greater than 0.357 because we're trying to see if the obesity issue in Texas, in Mission, Texas, is larger than our national average, so it's greater than. Now let's try another one. Let's see if we'll go. Oh, there's Fat Amy from. 
Okay, so is home field advantage real? So what would be our population proportion? Well, if it was real, um, if it were true that it wasn't real at all, then we would see a 50-50 chance that, you know, any team could win. So our, our null and alternative would be P equals 0.5, and alternative would be that it's greater than 0.5 because we have an advantage. So we would win more than 50% of the time. So what about this one? 20% of cars of a certain model have needed costly transmission work between 50,000 and 100,000 miles. The manufacturer hopes that a redesign of transmission component has solved this problem. So 20% of the cars need work. If I solve the problem, then that means less than 20% have solved it. So this would be my alternative and my null hypothesis. Okay, so what do we do towards the end? Well, after we do our work, we're going to find that probability, and we're going to find what we, that that probably is called this, the p-value. And we're going to we're going to see if that p-value is small. Because if it's small, then it tells us that something's weird. So basically our p-value is the probability that the sample proportion happens if the, null proportion, if the null hypothesis were true. So if that probability was really, really small, like less than 5%, then we would reject our null hypothesis. If it wasn't small enough, um, then we would fail to reject our null hypothesis. That 5%, sometimes we call that the alpha level. That alpha level can change, but we'll talk about that alpha le level later. But um, for the most part, you want to check your p-value with your alpha level. All right, so here's to wrap up what I just talked about. First, if the p-value is smaller than the alpha level, we're going to reject the null hypothesis. If the p-value is larger than the, than the alpha level, then we will fail to reject the null hypothesis. Again, I can't stress anymore, never accept the null hypothesis. You can fail to reject it, but never accept it. Okay, in the next video, I will show you exactly how to do a one pr proportion um, Z test, uh, step by step with an example. This was just kind of setting it up. All right, thanks for joining me. Bye.